The great life adventure is that centerpiece experience that we can have in our lives that becomes our story and uh, then is typically experienced in youth and then portioned out throughout the rest of our life as our part of our character and who we are and uh, uh, an intricate high point in the narrative of our lives. It's good to have a great life adventure in our early 20s, early to mid 20s, after university, uh, off preferably. Go have, you can, you can mix it in a little bit, but, uh, but go to university, finish that. That's very important, get your degree. That will open doors throughout your life. And even if it's not a career boost, at least it, it provides that basic experience of, of being in a challenging, um, uh, worldly, so to speak, environment, you know, broad environment, being exposed to many things that we might not otherwise know in the course of our lives for a good number of years before setting out into the world. And also being challenged to read, write, and communicate effectively, um, become good communicators. And again, broad, broaden our minds. After that's done, then to seek out and have an adventure of some sort. It can be anything you want. It should be something that, uh, of course, interests you, challenges you, and is big enough and broad enough to, to be fearful and to be something that you can have a chance to overcome. And maybe if you're lucky, <clears throat> it'll even break you. Those are the blessed ones, if they don't, at least if they don't die, right? Because it can kill you too. Although sometimes that's not so bad either. What a, what a way to end. <laughs> but um, they go out trying. But uh, if you can come, if you can be, the image that I have in my mind is that we return. We, we, I have this picture in my mind. We come home from our last day at university, back home to our parents or our caregivers or whoever it is, right? Whoever takes care of us. And we've got our degree in hand and we say, and we give that to them. And we say, okay, here. Thank you for this. Thank you for helping me, supporting me, encouraging me through this. It's, can you watch that for me? I'll be back by age 30 or whenever you want, right? But optimally give yourself the whole decade of the 20s. And then off you go. I don't, the details don't matter. Go out, experience the world. Hold off on the marriage, the family, the career, and everything like that until you've come back. Come back sometime in your late 20s, a couple of years later, maybe a, maybe a full five, six years out there. Optimally, if I was to do it again, I wouldn't plan to come back until I had crossed over my 30th birthday. And when you come back, you know, your your backpack is worn, your clothes are tattered, your your hair is bleached from the sun, and your skin is skin is, is red or, or, or deep tan from the outdoor exposure. You've got, uh, uh, you know, so maybe a couple of interesting books in the backpack that you never would have known otherwise. You've got some names in your in your notebook uh, with contact information of people maybe in faraway places that you met along the way and a brain chock full of stories from your great life adventure and you come back and maybe if you're lucky you're limping a little bit and you're humbled and you're a little more soft-spoken and quiet and a little more resistant to uh, to to extend yourself without first thinking about what you're about to do a little more mature there that is then you can receive back the degree. Then you can dust off any accumulated dust, prepare your resume, CV, I guess as they call it these days, and then start the process of building your career. Now sure, you'll think, well, Kurt, my cohorts that graduated with me are already three, four, five, six years into their career. They're, they're no longer entry-level people. Now they're moving up the career ladder. I'm, I'm now, I'm an entry-level employee. Um, that's true, and you'll probably be behind all your life, although you may have some exceptional cap capabilities and you may, you know, leapfrog up to the, the wherever you want to be. But that said, you have something that is quite valuable. You have your story, your great life adventure, and that is going to be your bomb and uh, soothing element in your the thing that's going to make you an interesting person and a dynamic person, maybe more so than you would have otherwise been as you proceed, you will be the person that has a story. It has a, a little bit of a smile on the edge, a little that smiles a little bit more than the fame thing that we sometimes give in the workplace to uh, keep up appearances. There's something genuine back there. You've satisfied something. You also will not have missed the boat because you will have already sailed and come back. Sometimes when we start early, 
and we have the want of desire and want and desire for an adventure and we don't give it to ourselves then we pine for it throughout our career lives especially as we grow in responsibilities and marry and have children and then you're really settled and you've got a mortgage and college tuitions to pay and etc cetera, etc cetera. you've got to postpone all of that and then maybe when you're all done you reach my age 60 years old 65 years old and it's time to retire at last you're free your responsibilities are in their past but you are no longer the person that you were you're no longer young you're no longer foolish you're no longer wide-eyed you're no longer full of energy you're wiser smarter weaker more timid more cautious and less likely to have a great life adventure in the spirit and to the depth that you would have had in your younger years. Now, you, now you're at the age where the type of adventure you might have is a safe and settled tour of Europe or maybe a, a princess cruise to Alaska with all the drinks included. Or maybe a, you'll get yourself a nice motorhome coach and you'll travel around your country going from safe place to safe place with hookups every night and neighbors all around just like you. They're retired too. They had their sane and so safe. They've got their safe places to go back to and their nice 401ks or pensions or essential social security draws. And they talk about their families, their children's, their careers. And they talk about the state of the world and how things have changed. The young people, they say, just aren't like we were. That's who you become if you wait. It's a lot harder to have the type of great life adventure that you might have had in mind post-college. It's not going to come back. You can't have it now. It's too late. You waited too long. It doesn't mean you can't have a good one. It's going to be different, though. It's going to be that thing that you are now, that, that experience that will come of being who you waited to become. Be careful. If you are one of us, one of our tribe, who desire such a thing, and there's not everybody's like this. There's a lot of people who have no interest in this type of stuff. But if you feel like you are one of us, and you're in your late teens, early 20s, I recommend mapping out a spot of time in your life, in your, in your 20s have one or more great life adventures to become your story and your, your consequence of a deliberate life.